champion Cloth <laughs> is showing up large and in charge, trying to improve on a result that we saw from Stephen Bates a few weeks ago. Yeah. Dylan Jack now trying to make a name for themselves at this uh, five and one spot, but you got to go through Mr. V-Star himself, Rudy Wade, yeah. and all of his followers on any major uh, music platform. Bringing the hot mixtape here to our table with uh, Lugia V-Star. We'll have to see if he's able to pull out a win here, but we're going to be getting into this matchup, and it's going to be an interesting one, that is for sure. Jumping into these prize cards. <gasps> Double Luminion. That's not good. Oh, uh, yeah, that's pretty awkward there. Not not one fish, but two in the prize cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're gonna go, have to go fishing in those prize cards really <laughs> yes. quick. At least one is on the bottom there, but uh, hopefully Rudy starts with um, some supporter, <laughs> maybe already. Yeah, or double chops, you know, whatever yeah, it ends true. up being. <laughs> that we have is very true. the fist bump, we are underway. And I mean, there's there's definitely some interesting news for both these players once we get underway here. Yeah, we are jumping into our Swiss round seven between Rudy Wade versus Dylan Jack. Two uh, very interesting decks here. We're starting over on Rudy's side, though, that Mancino starting off in the active position with a gift energy. And then Rudy able to go back into the deck here with that ace spec card. These are new cards, or somewhat new cards, been added to our format just recently, you can only have one ace spec in your deck at a time. And so usually they're pretty powerful. Master Ball is going to allow you to search out any Pokemon there. Very uh, on brand. We're going to get that Lugia V on the table here for Rudy Wade to start things off. Let's take a look at the rest of the hand. It's just going to be a pass over there. Just a Master oh, yeah. Ball to the discard. Back this this hand Dylan, is bad. Rudy has not much going on, and this is exactly what you need to do if you have not seen the <laughs> crab. Take a peek. Yes. It's a dangerous Pokemon, and this is uh, looking to be a pretty solid start here as well. Yeah, my cloth. Uh, my cloth's name is Joseph, Kyle. There so he that's, is. That's what I call <laughs> the jo Joseph on the bench there. Love to see it. I'm a huge supporter of cloth. I even had it in my pre I almost honestly predicted it for this event. Can you maybe, believe it, Kyle? Maybe if you had a little more sleep, you would have been uh, <laughs> spot on there for it. <laughs> that is very true. Uh, usually it would be the opposite, but yeah. Let's go through this deck, I suppose. If somebody's not familiar with Klopp, I mean, it's definitely not the most familiar. Ru Rudy Wade doesn't even look that familiar reading all of these cards that are coming down. So if you had to describe how this deck functions, how would you describe that, Kyle? Yeah, I mean, Brute Bonnet is really one of the key pieces. It, having access to a special condition uh, being in that poison that you can give yep. both of the Pokemon it's going to be so vital as this provides that opportunity to activate the rest of your abilities there with the cloth. You can, instead of doing just 30 damage for two energies, you're instead doing 190 damage. And that's when you start to incorporate plenty of knockouts. It's going to be single prizes yes. back and forth, which is something we see oh. with ancient box players. But when you're dealing these kind of numbers, you can start to trade with V Pokemon pretty easily. Yes, I love to see this coming out onto the field now. It's so rare that we actually get to see our poison markers coming down. But uh, unfortunately, poison's going to vanish real quickly with an evolution. But I don't think it's going to be gone for very long. That Brute Bonnet with the Toxic Powder ability allowing for both of the active Pokemon this to be is poisoned. Great. Rudy's hand is terrible, but he has just <laughs> enough to get the job done against Cloth. He's got the energy for special roll. And was was the boss already in hand? Yeah. But, oh, wow. But look at the rest of the hand. It's energy really and bad. collapse stadium and another Chinchino. There's nothing going on here. This is not how Lukia plays. Not at all. We're used to seeing those Archeops be down on the field evolution a lot more than uh, what is happening here. But like you said, Kyle, that's enough to take that cloth off the field uh, for Rudy. So, I mean, it's a turn. That's for that sure. That is a turn of Pokemon. And we are <laughs> seeing another one here. If it was the Colrus experiment, then Jeez. we could have seen an amazing turn. Just the simple Lost Provisions activation for Cramorant would have been yeah. enough to take the knockout on Chinchino. Instead, has to go the alternate route using the Arvin and finding a little bit of help here. But honestly, I just want to thin this hand down and start drawing with B-roll. 
Yep, that is for sure. That's why it's there. It's already been evolved into, so we got some extra support oh, there. Excuse me, this is just adorable. This is the best <laughs> thing you can do. If you don't have Culver's Experiment, lost back you away your own tool and That's get to perfect. four yourself. Aww. It is disgusting, and I love every second of it. <laughs> yes, we're used to see the Lost Zone being stacked up with those Comfey, but not today here. We're getting to four there to activate that Cramorant. <laughs> This is not what I, I thought we would be seeing here today, Kyle. <laughs> There's, this is not this is not right. <laughs> we, see, we see the gift energy activate, so a couple additional cards for Rudy. Yeah. But there's there's still nothing going on. This would be an excellent time to see Archeops. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're not going to see it. Yeah, that is a bummer. Gift energy drawing Rudy up to seven, but just that great ball that's going to draw out at least the Lugia V-Star. But what is a Lugia V-Star if uh, you don't really have anything else supporting it? That exactly. is the, the major point of this deck is to get out those supporter Pokemon that help accelerate your energy in the Archeops. Mancino is going to join us on the on the bench as well. But also, if all your energy is in your hand, it can't even come out of the deck either. So... This is just so awkward here for Rudy. It's just a bunch of energy, and I own no there, and uh, an Ultra Ball, I suppose, as well. I mean, you're, you've done nothing. Your opponent's done nothing. You're yeah. scrapping, and then you have Iono in hand. So there's an opportunity to at least Get see something. a couple more cards, potentially run into the perfect Ultra Ball double chops. I mean, we'll, we'll, only time will tell, but even a single Archeops in this spot would be pretty solid if you had a way to discard it. See Jacques added to the hand along with an Archeops, so not the worst, I suppose, but still need some help. Yeah, I'm gonna need some help indeed. At least some cards here to work with. We're gonna see another Mancino come down, or not, I guess, Kyle, from Rudy. Yeah, it, I don't think it matters too much at this point. If, if I was going to say, if what's the if, Yeah, I if your opponent's targeting this Pokemon, yeah. it doesn't, it, you're just adding another Pokemon that can trade one for one at that point, yeah. and it's, it's fine for you. Well, Artisan's going to come down onto the field. Rudy, I guess, just check in to see, make sure um, he knows what it does here, and that's going to bring out our cloth. <laughs> He's going to well. read it again. <laughs> He's been in the studio for the last four years, the last time yes, that we've seen a big result true. from Rudy. That well. is true. And honestly, I don't even blame Rudy at this point. I, I feel like going into one of these large events, I mean, the percentage of hitting a deck like Cloth is so, so slim. Then to hit it and be on stream against it, that's got to be a bit nerve-wracking here. Yep. But uh, Dylan knows exactly what he's doing behind this deck here. Uh, a couple similar lists have been played. We saw Cloth come out with that Electrode combination, and this is now the new iteration of the deck. And uh, it seems to be doing pretty well. Dylan taking it to a 5-1 record so far, hoping to get another win here. So, yep. This is not a deck that people prepare for. And yeah. you can surprise a lot of players. You can knock out Lugias in one turn. A Lugia V, it's very simple to surprise your opponent and deal 220 damage out of nowhere when you include the poison effects. But yeah. that's not going to be the case. Still, two for one prize exchanging here with the Cramorant dealing uh, exactly enough to get you to that halfway threshold on the Lugia V-Star. You can't complain in that spot. Yeah, you love to see it. Both of our dark Pokemon on Dylan's side are those poisonous Pokemon. The Brute Bonnet allowing Dylan to poison both active Pokemon. And then that H Radiant Hisuian Sneasler, not one we see very often for a Radiant Pokemon. Uh, but that Poison Peak ability allows you to add two more damage counters on a Poison Pokemon checkup. So... I love seeing the damage or the poison markers out on our fields, and Rudy Wade is probably dealing with this for the first time today in this tournament. So we're going to have to see <laughs> how he navigates it. We see that evolution into the Chinchino here. And uh, two cards in hand. Yeah, this there was there, there's certainly two different ways to go about this turn. We saw the Ultra Ball top deck, which really leads to a lot of different avenues. There's Professor's Research in hand, so oh, okay. could have used Ultra Ball, discard an Archeops, grab another one, throw that in the discard with the Research, and you have seven cards in your hand this turn. S chose to go with the Jacques, discards, but has the Chinchino now in play. But you're left in a weird spot. This mm. Lugia V-Star, it's not really getting the job done. It's already damaged. You're, you're probably going to go down in the prize exchange. And you can uh, give it some energies in this spot, but maybe if you had drawn a couple more cards, you could have found access to a jet energy, and then maybe attack with Pokemon like Snorlax in this instance. 
Yeah, that is true. There's a couple of different routes I suppose Rudy could take there, but hey, at least we have the Archeops down now. Both of these being activated off that Primal Turbo that's going to be accelerating all of these special energy onto the field here for Rudy. Yep, I suppose you could still retreat if you want to keep this Pokemon around, force your opponent to have access to boss's orders, whatever it may be. Something to target down that Lugia, but really yeah. values knocking this Pokemon out and getting rid of that stadium, the Artisan, so maybe we don't see back-to-back -back cloths played down <laughs> and you can slow down this fearsome engine on the other side. Yes, absolutely. That is a big win there. Taking that stadium out, uh, slowing down Dylan for sure, and moving your way through this matchup. Now, two prize cards down on Rudy's side of the field, and we are over to Dylan's turn. So taking a look at the hand here, what are we seeing, Kyle? Uh, I mean... The, the beauty of this is you still have the Beaverol, so you can continue to draw up. There's cards like the Lost Vacuum. You could find some access if you are able to target down anything. Fortunately, nothing on the board just yet, so... Yeah, I but think... The, but you don't have to do very much this turn yeah. also. You have Claw ready to roll. You have a switch in hand for next turn. The Artisan being lost in this spot was actually pretty big. As that was the only thing Dylan wanted to accomplish this turn, was bench another cloth. Yeah, that's actually a really good point, and it just wasn't able to happen thanks to that being gone now. Uh, that cloth there taking the knockout here, uh, just so just in case anybody's uh, unclear what that cloth is doing, the unhinged scissors is what actually activates all that extra damage. It's 160 extra damage plus a base 30 on that cloth if it is affected by a special condition, which is why we need to see that poison as well. Yeah, cloth is hurting himself to get the job done, but that's the sacrifices we make in Pokemon. <laughs> Snorlax now is the, uh, the next Pokemon that will take its chances against the big crab and yes i mean we see the prize cards fall and they are going in dylan's favor at this point and it's up to rudy to find some disruption i think that looks like target the barrel at some point start to slow down this engine if you if your opponent doesn't have access to cloths maybe you get lucky and we didn't see a cloth last turn so i guess you take your first shot and knock out this yeah. cloth and hope to not see a second one I mean, at least we're working with one prize Pokemon trade back and forth here from these players. This is not the familiar block Snorlax that is so commonly used out in our field. This is the unfazed fat Snorlax that uh, we used to see a lot of. Now, of course, less, but perfect inclusion here in Lugia. is going to get the job done being able to, uh, to hit enough damage. Now, there is a strategy that Rudy could incorporate at some point in time. You play down that Lugia V, try to evolve that without being targeted by a boss's orders. Maybe you play that down when your opponent has mm. like two prize cards remaining. Uh, incorporate that on a turn where you use Iono as well. And then you have those additional yeah. hit points to work with. And that can start to counteract the one-to-one the -one prize exchanging that we see here. Yep, absolutely. That was the boss's orders here to bring up that Bibarel. That is a single prize knockout once again there for Rudy. Yeah, it's clearly something you want to accomplish at some point in time. The issue is this cloth goes unchecked, when, the prizes yeah. will continue, but you did get rid of this Beaverol, so next turn, if Iono is played, you really can do some damage. You will not see another cloth if you're able to stick that and your opponent does not find second Beaverol. So you think that was the turn to uh, to take out the Beaverol then, Kyle? It's, it's tough to say, because if you have the Lugia and everything else to go along with it, maybe you wait a turn, but yeah. I... You can't fault him for going after the B-roll. It is terrifying. <laughs> yes, it is. That is, uh, that is doing a lot of work there for your opponent. And this game is just flying back and forth here. I feel like we just jumped into this match, and it is already down to the wire here. Dylan with only two prize cards left to take. Rudy, on the other hand, three left to take here, but still uh, the potential with these attackers on board. Going to go into the deck here now for this Ultra Ball that's going to grab us this Radiant Charizard. Yeah, and at this point, is just find three Pokemon that can get the job done. And then Ginchino's do Minchino's ready to roll. Minchino's eventually going to evolve as well. And the big question now is, do you go Luminion for Iono? Hopefully your yeah. opponent is just stuck with two cards and a bad hand. And I think you just take the risk, play that Pokemon, even though it's a V, and try to put your opponent on a hand where they miss for a turn. Yeah, I think that that is the risk we're going to probably have to see taken because, uh, yeah, being behind there in prize cards, we're going to have to see that disruption to make sure that Dylan cannot take that win condition home and take a win in this matchup. But we'll have to see what Rudy decides to do here. 
luminous energy coming down onto that Radiant Charizard, and we are going to see that Lumineon V coming down onto the bench. It's going to allow you to uh, search out a supporter card. It's going to be, of course, that Iono here for this disruption that we're going to see coming up here for both of our players. Dylan's just going to be at two cards after this, representing those two prize cards. Now we are getting to one of my favorite points in the game when there is potentially going to be one prize card available, and that is when we could potentially see that Crisis Punch Cramorant come into play. Oh. It's such a sneaky way to steal victories. The it Minion really V is, is already in play. So although this does not look great, and you see that there's some prize cards to make up, Vibril just needs to come up with a simple plan. Find Cramorant, find Crisis Punch, find Boss's Orders. You have two turns to get that done. If you find it, then you have a crazy mixtape going off. Crazy mixtape indeed, and that would be quite the way to go here if that's how things go down against Rudy Wade. But what did Dylan find off this Industrious Incisors? Nest Ball, and I believe there's also some switching effects, maybe Poke Gear. It was tough okay. to, to see it all. It moved so quickly, but well. Cramorant, <laughs> my old friend, welcome back. <laughs> my old friend. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the mixtape, the CD, that uh, technical machine crisis punch, not a card we see really often at all. I think a lot of people read it and they're like, wow, when would you ever use this? Well, this is the exact time that you would be using this card. And another surprise factor uh, added to this deck from Dylan Jack, and I'm sure Rudy is definitely not expecting that. We're going to start with this Pokey Gear 3.0. Let's see if Dylan's able to find some help in a supporter, but it's just going to be a whiff. No supporter off that Pokey Gear 3.0. Yeah, unfortunate to see, but it also thins a card down, so True. potential to see more cards with the B-Roll later on is going to be fine. And this is a very unassuming Cramorant. You know your opponent does not know what you're playing. Exactly. <laughs> they were clueless to the cloth. They read every single every other card. card. Even the that was, is on. <laughs> that was here. I don't know if I love this. I, <gasps> I think this is what? pretty awkward now. Although you do get to stay ahead in the prize exchange, if you were going for Cramorant Crisis Punch on Luminion, you just walked into giving your opponent a bunch of extra cards, and you're probably going to get Ionoed again and lose your Cramorant. Yeah, there might be a lot of uh, recovery needed there. I mean, there are two Cramorant, I guess, but yeah, you, you never know what cards are going to be in your hand to be able to seek out your win condition there. So this is a bit scary here for Dylan, but we're going to have to see what it comes down here uh, for now Rudy's turn. Of course, being able, gonna be able to take this knockout on this turn, and then really, yeah, it's up to Dylan. What what is Dylan able to find after this? Well, you already have an attacker in that Radiant Charizard, and you have the Chinchino now if you're Rudy, so you have all of those lined up. Yeah. Iono is also in hand, so you feel pretty comfortable about putting your opponent down to one card, although yeah. they still do have that beaver all there that you have to worry about. I, is, I suppose I you still have to think scary. about Crisis Punch could go on to the Sneasler and just find an energy. <laughs> there's there's some ridiculous combos, I suppose, where you just do this you're all right. out of whack and just attack for the three energy cost. Oh my gosh, you're right. Yeah, that double turbo is making up that two and you just need to find one single dark energy to be able to use use that there. It'd be, oh, yeah, it'd, be, it'd be ugly with another double turbo, but <laughs> you could find those resources if you're not able to find the Kramer in itself. That is brutal here. There's still options, Kyle. Nobody's out of this game yet. So Rudy's still going through this turn, of course. We're seeing that second primal turbo oh, okay. now. Okay, there's, there's wombo combos. There's the Thornton you could also do and then swap into the Lugia, evolve into the V-Star, and then have all those hit points in the active spot to avoid oh, giving your yeah, opponent that's true. those. So there's so many different avenues Rudy could go in this spot to try to stop your opponent. Oh, my gosh, It's wow. going to be the I slower approach. I would love to see that, but maybe, yeah. Well, I mean, not knowing that there is those options there on Dylan's side. So, yeah, just going to take the knockout there on that Cramorant. Again, it's still going to come up with uh, what Dylan can do with this turn. Both of our players are now down to one prize card here. We're going to see the Ultra Ball. All right, it's Cloth. It's not Cramorant. Okay. There's not, I guess both of them are already in the discard pile. So, but yeah. I was thinking even if Bieberol just finds Arvin for the Crisis Punch TM, you could have 
that win set up there. It's now just going to be digging for the double turbo for the cloth to close out on the Radiant Charizard. And he sees four cards. What are I know, we working I can't with? see that, Kyle. Any support or anything uh, to continue? I don't see it. It uh, looks like a town town oh. store, a lost vacuum. I mean, it's got to be that is, not much. That is a Dylan's depressed at it. mannerism. Sheesh. Is that town store? Yeah. I think Access. it's, I feel like it's. I think it's, it, it, I mean, it's, it's all of the pieces, but just too much of one side. You, you needed store. access to finding a way to bring the cram ramp back in or to find that energy, of course. The double turbo would have been great, but um, it's just the yeah. resources aren't lining no, honestly, up. Honestly, none of those are in hand at the moment. <laughs> oh, it's oh. brutal. Dylan does not find enough there, and Rudy Wade is going to squeak through. Learning how to play against Cloth on the fly. Hey, we still have the mystery of the crisis punch. Uh, that's for that's sure. true. The, I don't, the card was not discarded there from Dylan's side of the field and uh, definitely wasn't played. So there's still that mystery there. That technical machine may be the technology we need, Kyle, yep. to, I mean, to bring Rudy down. Rudy's very familiar with CDs and mixtapes, but he's never <laughs> seen this one. This, this, this is a very interesting inclusion that I'm sure could surprise him and definitely lead to a game three if it finds its way into a Lugia V-Star. <laughs> yeah, that is for sure. Uh, it's for a ton of damage there. Um, it's 280 base damage on that Crisis Punch. Of course, it's a tool card that uh, performs as its own move. Uh, you still would, as you said, would need two double turbos attached because that's all the deck plays. But you can only use it if your opponent is down to one prize card. So it's very... Interesting when it happens, but when it does, it is a powerful thing. But, but back and forth from both of our players here in our first game between them, we did see Rudy uh, taking out that draw support that Dylan had, um, which, which I think was great because it did uh, walk Dylan into some awkward turns there in that game. Yeah, I think the MVP was the attack with the Lugia V-Star. Removing that Artisan yeah. really limited the amount of access that Dylan had. I think that this was one of those fatal moves here. When we saw the Cramorant promoted and attacking, you lost access to finding a crisis punch situation, but we also saw that none of the other cards really came together there. And we'd be talking completely differently about this game if we had just seen double turbo draw and Cloth would have won the game. Yeah. And we would have been in the game, too, with a big smile on Dylan's uh, face. Yeah. Ooh. Is that double brute? It is. What two is happening? Brutes, two brutes and the prize cards. That is not what you want to see. Oh, this is not a, a, it's one, Hisu, one Hisuian heavy ball, thankfully. But finding it, you have to use the Arvin. It's just such a misuse of your resources. Speaking of that, that's a fish in the active. <laughs> They <laughs> definitely a misuse of resources there, unfortunately. It's the, the prize card liability already on your field now. <laughs> no. And oh no, that's even worse. I was about to say, Kyle, in the last game, the Chinchino was super clutch being able to take that early knockout on the cloth here. And that was amazing to see in the beginning there. And that's kind of what carried Rudy Wade through. But now there's nothing yep. carrying Rudy Wade through besides a gift energy, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, just sacrificial Luminion. Hope to get some additional energies off of that. But yeah. this is a realistic turn where you could lose if Brute Bonnet wasn't prized. That's true. <laughs> that is very true. Both Brute Bonnet were not prized. That is unfortunate indeed because as as we've said, that cloth does need to be, uh, be under a special condition in order to get all of that extra damage on its move. And Brute Bonnet is the thing that gets you through that. So unfortunate there for Dylan, but we'll see. I don't know. I didn't get to see the start hand, but as you said, there is that Hisuian heavy ball potential. Yeah, I like this. There's no other Pokemon. Oh, there's oh my gosh, it's it's on hand. There. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Hisuian heavy ball is going to allow Dylan to get one of these brute on it out. Look at that smile. You love to <laughs> see it. And then the Hisuian heavy ball is going into the prize cards to replace that brute on it. But that's exactly what you wanted to see. And then the second piece to that is, is that ancient booster energy capsule here on the brute on it to be able to activate that ability, that toxic know, powder like sprinkling like it down onto the field here and onto that Luminion V. Oh, what's left in the hand? Is there a supporter to play? 
access to the double turbo is all that's missing here. Colrus experiment for five cards. Oh, this is huge. It's not no there. No energy. That is a bummer to see. See, it lost vacuum once more, so finding four cards for Cramorant to yeah. potentially attack is once again an option. There's a Thornton in this deck as well. Just ridiculous things <laughs> all over the place. Thorntons I love are just this matchup. Popping out everywhere. That is wild. Well, our lost zone is going up there now for Dylan. At least that's something, but who would have loved to see that entire combo actually work out here to take out that Luminion. And it's just going to be the poison here. No energy on that cloth to be able to attack, unfortunately. Now we're over to Rudy. Another chance. But what was the top deck? Are we working with anything here, Kyle? Mm, it's not great. And I don't know if we have time for Jacques right here. <laughs> I think you just have to pull the trigger, go for the research, and hope yeah. to find some Pokemon. I feel like Lugia players are... are Pretty well versed and just throwing away hands sometimes when it gets into awkward positions. And uh, I would say this is quite the awkward position here, Kyle. You need yep. every single stop that you can pull out uh, for Rudy Wade's side of the field. And that's what it's going to look like. A lot of resources going into the discard pile, but you have to do what you have to do to be able to get through a game here. Oh, there it is. Not only the Lugia, but also a little additional help. The yeah. capturing aroma in hand. If this is Tails, you can go find the Minchino. You have the Chinchino already in hand. The research is there. The Master Ball is in hand as well. So you have to think that turn three Lugia V-Star with the Archaeops on board has to be a possibility. Yep, this is going to be a heads now off of that second capturing aroma. That's going to be an evolution Pokemon here for Rudy. That's what we need to see. Now the debate, I suppose, is retreating this Luminion, is that ever a possibility? Losing those two prize cards seems like a big issue at this point. You'd, you'd have to promote Minchino, which yeah. isn't great. You lose one of your attackers, but giving up two prize cards here before you ever get the ball rolling seems really rough. Yeah, and I think that's what it's going to look like. Ooh, Rudy thinks as well. This is but scary too, though, yeah, because what? there's a Radiant Hisuian Sneasler. 220 is definitely in range if I the was cards about to pile say, up. Isn't it exact? Well, uh, it is. <laughs> no, would it be? Because you do 190 poison is uh, with three counters, so it's 220. Well, we're gonna see a pokey year here from Dylan. I didn't see what the top deck was either. Wow. Is this another? Oh, I was about to say, is this another whiff of the, the Pokey Gear? <laughs> Not like this, but no. I, I didn't even see if there were other options. I, <laughs> took his time no. to grab one of the best supporters. <laughs> Finds the Colrus. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. But Colrus's experiment at least is found here. Are we going to judge Dylan. shuffle? There we go. I think so, yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work. There we go indeed. And Dylan's going to go straight into this Colrus now. We're going to see another five cards here. Three of them are going into the hand, two into the Lost Zone. That's going to sack our Lost Zone up to at least four here. Yep, Cramorant loves to see that, and Dylan would love to see double turbo energy, and that's not a thing. Yes. I suppose that is the main issue, is the double turbo energy say, would limit the damage count. That's minus 20, right? Yeah. <laughs> 200. All right, here's the two going into the Lost Zone now. We have the Artisan and an Iono. Ooh, now we're now we're online here. We got the B Burrell at least for some future turns coming up. Two crams down. Those are both the crams. Switch now into that Cramorant after the cloth. So we're at least going to see some damage go down thanks to the Lost Zone being at four, unlocking the Lost Provisions on the Cramorant. 110 damage here, but that's going to stack up quite a bit now uh, thanks to that poison as well. Yeah, I, this is a really rough turn. I mean, Dylan did everything that he needs to do. If you're Rudy on the other side, damaged Lugia V-Star looks like it'll be knocked out soon. The yeah. Luminion is likely going to be some prize cards at some point. I believe the Collapse Stadium was discarded by the professor's research. When you just start to think about how the prize map works in this, exactly. in this one, this looks like a concession kind of game in a best of three when you have 21 minutes remaining. Yeah. It's going to try for a little longer, but 
I, I think you'll realize pretty quickly wow. that unless your opponent prized three DTEs, this one is uh, just about cooked. Yeah, I was thinking that as well. I mean, our game, uh, our previous game between these players went all the way down to one prize card. So Dylan doesn't have any issues taking these prize cards off, especially if they're on these two prize uh, Pokemon. So it's, it's going to be tough here for Rudy to pull through, but we're going to see some more cards being played for this turn, capturing Aroma. Rolling a Heads here, which is another evolution Pokemon. Of course, we all already saw that V-Star power on the Lugia V-Star be activated to bring those Archeops down as well. I saw that there was a lot of energy in the hand as well for Rudy, which of course, if you have energy in the hand, can't be accelerated out of your deck, but is it awkward enough energy to impact anything? It's a little early for that, but although you, you start to see some of those energies now, you know that Iono at any other point will just shuffle those, back in. place them back to the bottom of the deck, and then you have access to them once more. I could definitely see that being an issue near the later stages of the game when you're on your, what, fifth attacker, trying to work <laughs> through another bird, another <laughs> crab, whatever it may be. But Yes, that's true. Yeah, anytime you're going against a single prize deck, you do have to think a little bit differently resources-wise. Can't yep. just you can't just hit hard and take several prize cards. It's a little bit more of a grind of a game. So. I feel like we've seen a lot of Lugia players switching to 17, 18 energies. Yeah. This is a 16 energy build. Although the double turbo energies are at full effect in this sort of matchup, it's uh, you still could run into some trouble where that if you have to discard a few of them with the professor's research, you might not have the energies to close out. Well, we'll have to see where this goes, but we're seeing a lot of energy come out here from both of those Archeops, that Primal Turbo. Our chops doing the work here, accelerating those energy onto the field, allowing Rudy to stack up these attackers, hopefully be able to take things home with these consistent knockouts. But Cramorant's gonna go down from Dylan. Rudy gonna take a price card off of there. Yeah, and if, if I'm Rudy, if I see double turbo this turn, I think I'm running away. This is <laughs> terrifying. But this is. The hand just hasn't worked for Dylan. Just continues to draw into awkward oh, no. pieces. A Thornton top deck in this uh, spot. It's not ideal. Wow, that is super unfortunate. Kyle, this is not how I wanted to see Cloth go down here in this game. There's always potential to rescue this as we're, we're talking about. It is single prize Pokemon, whereas there's a lot of double prize Pokemon on the other side of the field, but not when you keep getting draws and hands like this. Let's see what this Iono can bring here for Dylan. Six cards into the hand coming up. Where's one of those energies? Yeah, where's the energy? Oh, misses again. Not a again. single energy. My goodness. That is just not what you want to see. I mean, there are only four double turbo in the deck, but I mean, it is... There hasn't been that much stuff discarded, but to, to, to whiff it that many times is just unfortunate yeah. to see. You can see that Forest Seal Stone was a card that was placed on the bottom of the deck by the Iono. Iono. Yeah. Finds the Oranguru, which would have been the magical answer I was about to, to say, get the no. energy card. No. Instead now, just the pieces once again, just dodging each other. And this, yeah. is, this is a thin it to win it situation. <laughs> Put all your trust in this one. <laughs> Hey, I trust in the Viverell to get us there. We'll have to see what happens here. Ultra Ball being played to discard those two cards. One of them being that Orangaroo, which Rudy's going to pick up and take a read of here. Super Rod's going to put some cards back into the deck right off the bat here now. All right. I don't want to place too many Pokemon back in. I was about to say, uh, this is a pretty big turn. If we see all, if we see two of the two of those three, I will cry. I'm not, I'm not prepared for this moment. We're getting a judge shuffle here, and this could be the fate of Dylan now in this matchup. We'll have to see what is drawn into one card in hand. The rest being drawn now up to five for the hand off this industrious incisors. What do we got, Kyle? Have you seen it? This is not real life. No energy still. We are trapped in a dream. The cards are not lining up. Dylan is going to miss the attack. We cannot afford another miss here, Kyle. It is just going to be that toxic powder bringing poison back to the Lugia V-Star, but that still means that Lugia V-Star is on the board and is still swinging, knocking, uh, knocking out these attackers for Dylan. <sighs> this is a great moment to incorporate wow. a Pokemon like Snorlax. 
Yeah. You see those high hit points, you can take a knockout on the cloth, maybe include uh, therapeutic energy so you don't have to worry about the sleeping mm. effects and you're going to just be attacked by cram rats at this point. Your opponent doesn't play energy cards, so <laughs> let him hit yeah. you for 110. That's going to start to flip the prize exchange in your favor now. Yeah, that's true. And I, I mean, this whole game, it started with a Luminion, and now it has turned into Dylan whiffing so many energy that Rudy has taken the lead here in this matchup. And we are getting closer and closer to a potential 2-0 win here in our Swiss round seven for Rudy Wade. I'm sure happy to see the tides have turned a little bit here. Down two prize cards now. Now we still have a lot left to play here, though. Dylan going to promote this Cramorant into the active. Of course, that Industrious Incisors is no longer online unless we can see another evolution into another Bibarel for Dylan. Yeah, you think about everything that's gone wrong <laughs> to this point for yeah. Dylan right now, continuing to miss card after card, only finding Bibarels over and over again <laughs> to draw up to five and be disappointed. What's They're, worse is searching the deck and seeing all the energy, yeah, like, but they never are hitting here. They, yeah. these, these are cards in my deck. I thought we'd see it off the Colrus. I really did. I had such hopes. Well, you have the opportunity once more. Colrus is in hand, but Woo. expect to see the Beaver Roll draw up, have the hand at five cards, and then use that supporter card to try to get the job done, take some knockouts. All right. That's giving out cards and hands. I think an Iona was drawn into, but we wow. do see the double turbo and energy. It's, it's the one turn he doesn't need it. I know. <laughs> like, what are the odds? The Radiant Vesuvian Sneasler to take exact poison damage knockouts. Absolutely. So sad to see. Colrus's experiment is the supporter that's going to be played for turn here uh, for Dylan. <laughs> Putting some cards here into the Lost Zone. Even though it's going in the Lost Zone, Rudy Wade still is going to take a read there on that Kovalian. <laughs> Cool card. <laughs> is this for trade? <laughs> you know, finds all the double turbos now. Another in hand. So this is where the tides can turn. Dylan taking that two prize knockout. Yes. It's gonna see that opportunity to eventually target down that Luminion, and then it's just a race against Snorlaxes and Chinchinos. You have to think that that's favored for Dylan. It's gonna be on Rudy to target down B-roll once more. Try to limit the draw power. Hopefully the resources aren't all there. Or maybe you go after Brute Bonnet and just try to get rid of Poison. Like, just find uh, yeah. some part of this engine that you can target and abuse. Yeah, that is definitely true. Well, we're going to see our players now tied up as far as prize cards go. Dylan finally getting to those two prize cards, even though it should have happened a long time ago, Kyle, but we finally got in there thanks to that Poison damage here. Dylan. Now Rudy deciding what to promote here before continuing on this turn. Sorlax is going to be what joins us in the active now here. Was that an issue with the gift energy? I because if the damage should have if you're if you're being knocked out by poison, that's the that's not an effect of the attack. I'm not sure if you were supposed to draw energies with the gift there, but we'll continue on. If that's an issue, then we'll uh, we'll deal with that. I'm sure that will halt it. I didn't see if, if, it was, if it was relevant towards the, the knockout with the, the damage counters that were placed on the Lugia. But. Well, either way, if there was any sort of uh, issue in game stage, there should always be a pause, right? Um, but we're going. Archeops here, accelerating some energy onto the field. It's going to be that luminous energy being placed on that Radiant Charizard. Yep. That luminous energy is a card that often is forgotten about in this deck. It's, it doesn't pair well with other special energies. So yeah. how do you incorporate it into a list with 15 other special <laughs> energies? This is the one way to do it, just as a yes. singular attachment on a Radiant Charizard and try to find the right opportunity at the end of games. Both these players focused on big finishers in these spots to try to close out. And yeah, exactly. I love to see that. They're, they're totally different decks, but they have similar strategies in that sense of Coming out swinging at the end there for your final prize cards. And those are always interesting games to watch here. Well, we're going to see the knockout there on that cram ramp, but that Snorlax is going to take a nice rest there. Going to sleep on the board. I think we have some discussion there between our players and the judges. Maybe just checking out 
uh, everything that happened here between our players. Yeah, we're going to read gift energy and take a look <laughs> read, at that. It's the same. Read some cards real <laughs> quick. It's if you're knocked out by damage from an attack, and poison was the it way that this was have, knocked yeah. out. No, you're, you're exactly right. So there should not have been additional cards drawn from Rudy that turn, and I, I'll be the only one who had noticed it, I guess. Sure. I think so. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. Twitch chat is screaming. Well, yeah, that, that is for <laughs> sure. Hey, we're listening to you, Twitch chat. We love the, the support that you give us, calling out things that we sometimes miss. There's a lot of stuff we're looking at back here, but glad you caught that, Kyle. Hopefully our judges and our players can get things figured out. Yep. I mean, this is a wild game. There's so many interactions that Rudy's never seen before yeah, for that he's dealing with. He probably hasn't had to use a poison marker in the last 10 years, <laughs> and here it is now, all over his board and his opponent's board. Yeah, Can't fault exactly. him for not understanding these interactions when all of this is so new and you're under the lights. Oh, yeah, there's a ton going on there indeed. But, I mean, even, there's so many interactions. I mean, the Snorlax is going to sleep. You got the gift energy. <laughs> there's Thornton in the deck, which is, like, basic for basic. It's like... Yeah. It, Both players trying to incorporate <laughs> these cards. Yeah, I know, and it's doubling up on both sides. There's definitely a lot to be looking at and reading here, for sure. And then these these times where intricate things come up, where it doesn't technically count as damage there, as it I guess lists on the gift energy as uh, being activated. So, but I mean that is a, a big difference there, because if you draw into additional cards, then does it come down to like how did those cards help you? Like, yeah. do you just shuffle them back? What is the answer? So the Lugia had enough damage to where the Spit Innocently did not take the damage, the t did not take the knockout. Poison is the effect that knocks out this Pokemon. Gift Energy reads that if you're knocked out by damage from an attack, you draw those cards. But Five not, cards turns yeah. into seven, leads to this turn. There's going to be an issue with, I don't even know how you reverse this game state. It might be something that you just can't come back from. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because the uh, Pokemon checkup is maybe a term that not a ton of people are familiar with, but it is actually like a miniature turn that happens between both our players' turns. And it's essentially where you assess the board state and you keep track of any sort of uh, upticking counters or something like poison damage there. So that that is actually when that happens. It is, it's not like some sort of effect of something else. So... You got to do a quick little checkup, and uh, your Pokemon's locked out. Yeah, yeah, true. It's like, if we played it the way you're truly supposed to, you place all the damage on the Pokemon, and then at that checkup time, you read, are you knocked out, little buddy? And he is, and, and then, then you go, like, okay. <laughs> you, place, you place him gently down into the discard pile and continue on back, play with a new Pokemon. They dissolve back into the ball, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Return! You did great! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully we can sort this out. The only issue I guess I could see happening is if you're taking those extra cards from the gift energy, then, like, you would draw into something differently. Yeah, so I, mean, then, you, I mean, you're that, seeing cards you shouldn't have yeah, seen. Exactly. You engaged in a turn where I don't know if you can come back from all that. <laughs> at, at a least, lot other, uh, of other things happen yes. as well. Yeah, maybe if we got this a little sooner, <laughs> there, there could have been a way to stop this, but... I mean, also, we got we got the power of video on our hands. There is potential to uh, yes. maybe bring this back. Yeah, hopefully there's going to be a bit of a rewinding here. But, I mean, this is a good lesson uh, to everybody out there who plays Pokemon TCG and who's competing at these tournaments. If you are skeptical of anything that happens, it is always, always better to just pause, take a look at things, consult with a judge, and figure it out from there. Because if you go too far and the game state is too far gone, you could have a different result. Uh, back at, I think it was like one of the first regionals I played in, I I let my opponent take a knockout and that was like game. But then I was like, wait, actually that wasn't a knockout because like I had this tool card or something. But yeah. it was too late and I lost because of that. So that was a bummer. <laughs> you didn't do your, your checkup. I know, I didn't check up. <laughs> you, 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 see, there my, we go. We're a Pokemon checkup there. <laughs> if you just fully role played the whole scenario and returned your Pokemon <laughs> with the, the Pokeball, you would have been fine. I'm just going to start. <laughs> uh, 
I should just start standing up as well in my matches <laughs> and announcing every attack like that, too. It's absolutely a power move, and I would expect it from every cloth gamer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, you, you need every bit of power on your hands. <laughs> Did you think you'd be casting over a cloth game today, Kyle? I, I didn't think we were going to cast table 700, so no. So, <laughs> But honestly, Whoa. like it is, it's a deck that can do this. I'm not surprised in the fact that it showed up, but it never shows up in numbers. It, there's just not a That's lot of true. trust behind it. Yeah, It's a great surprise. It takes advantage of players who aren't ready for it. The better players know how to work around this, yeah. and they're... they're if you've prepared for Ancient Box, you've prepared for this, essentially. This sure. is just Ancient Box with a, a couple extra pieces and not being reliant on Sada. That's true. And a little poison. Yeah, a and, a, and, a, and, a, and a, a cute beaver guy. All, all the all the fun <laughs> things. Like, this is a, the, the best way to play Ancient Box is to get rid of all the ancient Pokemon. Yes. Oh, my gosh, <laughs> Kyle. I'm sorry, my, my ancient gamers out there. <laughs> Kyle roasting y'all today. <laughs> Why would you play with ancient Pokemon when you could have big, meaty claws? Big, meaty <laughs> claws here off that cloth. We actually were listening to uh, what the cloth sounds like back there, backstage. Is this like the what does the fox say? <laughs> Can you do your best impression, Kyle? He's a cloth. <laughs> I don't know if it's appropriate, but he does sound like a cow being run over. It's what? like... It's, just, it's like... <laughs> Don't talk about Joseph like that. It's a poor little mill tank that just never stood a chance. <laughs> That's, that honestly is what it sounds like. That uh, is very true. Cloth is a beloved, though. Definitely a popular Pokemon. I'm happy to see it being brought up in a deck here as well. What do you think the MVP is, though? Is it? Is it? I feel like Cramorant does equal, like, damage here. I don't know. They're yeah. both so good. Yeah, I honestly, I, I think it's Cramorant. The deck doesn't work if it doesn't have a finisher that can That's handle true. the high hit points work through the awkwardness gonna, of that single prize okay. exchange because you're going to fall behind at some point. Right. Looks like we're so, going to get a uh, hearing from the judges uh, now. Let's listen. I can't hear you. <laughs> you can you get, hear me now? Yes. yes. I'm so go. sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you guys are going to go ahead and uh, the research is legal. Um, we're going to... Wait, what? We're return the two cards that shouldn't have been taken with the gift energy. Yes, so we're going to return the two cards that should not have been taken with the gift energy, which are the two Lugias that are your discard pile. Okay. And then we're going to move forward from there. Okay. Uh, what's, is Perfect. there any penalty? Whoa. Wow. There's going to be a double price okay. card penalty. Oh, okay. I was going to say, surprising. that has Wait, to be. No. Oh, never. <laughs> I, I can't hear you. Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yes. Wonderful. So there is no penalty. Okay. This professor's reach is legal. We are going to put back cards you got. From um, these two Lugias, correct, and no, show no. two lu basic Lugias. The two basic Lugias. <laughs> these two Lugias, yes. and then what do I do with them? You're gonna put them back in your deck, and then that's it. Yes. Plot armor unlocked for Rudy Wade. That's a surprising Start call to hear, but we'll take it. Producing your own music. This is I guess. this is the great news for Twitch chat because double prize penalty would have been. Uh, game over, essentially. Now we have a game in our hands. Well, is it is it great news, though? Kyle? If you want to watch know. game two all the way, yes. If you want to watch a winner, no. <laughs> I The way I see this playing out, Cloth wins with eight minutes remaining, and we all cry as Cloth oh desperately tries to gosh. close this one out. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, we're going to be getting back into this game. At least we're uh, getting a nice little continuation. You don't have to listen to any more of our cow impressions here from Kyle and I. Uh, so that's good, I suppose. And I'm glad we got to that. To Everyone's out. a winner. Every I got to try out some animal sounds and Cloth continues to play. Yes, lesson learned, everybody. Make sure you do your Pokemon checkups. All right, Super Rod being played here now for Dylan. Let's zone back into this game. Where did we leave off, Kyle? Well, a lot of things that shouldn't have happened happened and <laughs> we're back to Snorlax attacking taking a knockout and Dylan is in a situation where a boss's orders at any point on that Luminion yeah. would feel great but I think you realize that you don't need to rush it you saw your opponent lose yeah. that collapse stadium early on now it's about continuing to have access to Ooh. some resources prime catcher is there I mean take the prizes if they're there it was yeah. about digging for the boss's orders if you couldn't but if the Prime Catcher's there, 
you got two prize cards. Your opponent's going to be playing from behind. There's no way to come back from it. Yeah, I was about to say, now we're going to see this disruption following that prime catcher as well from that Iono. So Dylan still going to be at four cards from the Iono. Rudy only at three. Yep. So that could be uh, what is needed here potentially. But that Luminion V is now inactive here. And this is for the picking. This is the main issue with Lugia. It's, it's not the deck it used to be two years ago when you could play down an ancient Raiko and take double knockouts and clean up the board. This deck is so linear now. It's attach big energies, do big knockouts. And that doesn't work when you're playing against a one-on-one -on -one prize exchange. You're already down in the prize race. Yeah. You see two double turbo energies in play. So that guarantees that at least it will be down to one prize card remaining as Dylan next turn. And that leads to either another cloth being played with a double turbo or a cram rant with a crisis punch. There's always going to be some way to take that final knockout. Yeah, that's what we wanted to see here from Dylan. And there was just so many turns where it was coming up short here, but now it seems like we've locked in these resources here on Dylan's side. The Brute Bonnet's down. We have the Biberel. There's another Bidoof on there. That Sneasler's there. The Cloth's with the energy as well. So that's what we needed to see from Dylan. Now two prize cards left to take to take this game. Rudy sitting at three, gonna promote that Radiant Charizard now here that already has the Luminous Energy on it. Yep, this might be a turn too early, but the, the resources weren't there. If you have yeah. the boss's orders, you target down the, the Beeberl maybe. I don't, it's, it's tough because the energies are already there for the Cloth. Yeah, I exactly. suppose you just have to knock out Cloths and hope your opponent doesn't Go find anything with Beeberls over and over again. Oh, ho, ho. And uh, <laughs> there's Mr. <laughs> Fancy Pants. <laughs> yes, Cramorant join in the field. Once again, here off that artisan that Dylan put into play for this turn. I love that this is Dylan's first time on stream, and yeah. he just has the judge shuffling his deck every time. <laughs> <laughs> just, just like, oh, I've got this saver. really great resource available. I might as well. I feel like I'm so bad at shuffling usually, but it's it's kind of like a nice little buff, yeah. Ooh, finds judge the forest here. seal stone. Well, now next turn. A Ringaroo just leads to guaranteed finding the Cramorant resource you would need, whether it be Boss's Orders or what say you. Dylan should be down to just one prize card remaining, I believe, and yes. Yeah, and it's the History <laughs> Heavy Ball. <laughs> All right, we'll see if the prophecy is filled. Does Dylan win this game with eight minutes remaining? Yes, that is true. Yeah, we did get a 10-minute time extension, which should be reflected on the clock here now for these players, I believe, and also a warning from that judge intervention that we saw earlier but yeah are we gonna oh no all right you, this you have to find a way to slow down the engine and, or do you go after the poison do you remove the cloth does it not matter because cramorant's a scary exactly, bird exactly that's what i'm saying there's just <laughs> too much on board here that dylan's working with but i guess we'll see what rudy decides to do just gonna be remove the cloth right. here from play one more prize card down Gonna see one if to one <laughs> prize is Cramorant active. Is it there? I know you've been waiting for this moment. Kyle. It's on the bottom of the deck. Oh my gosh. The orange CD. Could it be that the orange CD is what takes out Rudy Wade? Of that course, is the lost question. provisions, removing the cost of the attack. Crisis Punch would be free. Knocking out any Pokemon oh my gosh, in play. Is it really? That's like how that? it works. What? It's a cheat code. That's. Oh, yeah, I guess that Are makes the sense. resources there? Nest Balls in hand is a Rangaru in the deck? Wait, was it discarded? Oh, no. I think it's uh, I think it's there. There's... No, I think it was discarded, but then it was super rotted. Right. Remember? Or was that this game? It, may, it, may, it got shuffled back in. A Rangaru's there. Way, Forest there. Sealstone should be found. Forest here we go. Sealstone being Sealstone. activated. We're seeing it here. That Cramorant free oh, attack. Oh, this is just going to be a cloth play. Same oh, thing. It's sorry. I mean, yeah. Pick same, your poison. Same effect here. <laughs> the cloth is coming back out with those big, meaty claws, Kyle. And it's going to take the knockout here, securing Dylan a win in this Swiss round here. At least for that game. Our players are now one to one here, heading into another game. But we did not have much time, Kyle. Yep, that was without a two prize penalty. That yep. was the, the the prize cards were already on board. And Dylan was able to identify this is easily a game that he can win. Rudy was grasping at straws, trying to find a way to take away the resources, slow down the fact that 
there are already four prizes on board by yes. turn three, and you can't come back from a situation like that. You have to play the single prize race, and you need to be up at least a prize in order to keep up if you're Lugia. Around 20 minutes, had yeah. the opportunity to get out of there and try for a clean game three, and instead, it's going to be going at it with about six minutes left. It's a scary spot. Yeah, Cloth taking it down here. I mean, we saw that start for Rudy. It was brutal there with the Luminion, just an energy attached. But Dylan whiffed so many energy throughout the start of that game. I believe it was like two turns in a row that Cloth was unable to attack. And Rudy was able to recover there with some attackers back and forth. But then Dylan finally got things established on the board state over on our right side. And uh, all the resources were there to have multiple ways to take this win in the end. We thought it was going to be the epic crisis punch. Ended up being that epic Thornton as well. Either way, it was going to be epic here for a win from Dylan Jack with Clough taking that win there. And it's a 1-1. One -one. And now we are going to be moving on to our final game between these players with just a little bit of time left. We're going to have to ask ourselves, is Rudy Wade going to end up stranded in the active again with just a Pokemon that's unusable? Or will Dylan Jack be fighting for survival with no energy hits? There's a little bit oh, of no. hope. The prize cards aren't great. Chinchinos <laughs> are going to be hanging out there. <laughs> Okay. Finds a lot of Pokemon to go, but yeah, so you can already see five minutes remaining on the clock. This has to be turbo mode if you want to get the job done. At least Lugia's benched, and that's number turbo. one what you're asking. That is number one. I think that's probably the maybe the best setup we've seen so far here from Rudy. This uh, hand is pretty great. Double Archaeops, Master Ball. That's Luminion Research next turn. True. Giddy up. Yeah, that is pretty nice to see. Of course, we also have that Lugia V with the double turbo energy attached on turn one as well. So we'll have to see what Dylan is able to do on this turn one, starting with the Brute Fauna in the active position here for Dylan and the Nest Ball going into the deck. Yeah, plenty of switching effects in the deck, so no worry about all of those retreat costs. And it looks like there's access to a fair amount of Pokemon from this hand. The Artisan is played as well, and maybe the support of choice will be that Iono which would just be absolutely disrespectful to Rudy's hand if it's placed on the bottom. <laughs> that indeed would. I guess we'll have to see what happens here, Kyle. Oh, well, this is so great. It's just going to vacuum away and start to load up. Says, you know what? I'm the only one who uses <laughs> artists on this game. Yeah, that's nice to see, actually. You utilize the Artisan, and then you take it off the field, so your opponent cannot utilize it. And now you have two cards in your Lost Zone as well, so we're only two away from having that Lost Provisions online for the Cramorant. Here's the Iono. We'll have to see what Rudy's hand ends up looking like after this. It is going to be an additional six or fresh six cards here for Rudy, hopefully working with something here. Of course, for Dylan, an additional six cards here after the rest was shuffled and put to the bottom. We're going to see the energy. Yay, that's what you want to see <laughs> <Woo>! here. <laughs> Bare minimum gamers. We're getting yes. the job done. <laughs> All right. What else is in the hand here for Dylan now? Uh, it looks pretty nope. good as far as the town store. You'll have some access to some of those additional resources, but you need the Bieberall to continue to get the ball rolling. And that was maybe not the flip you were looking for. Capturing Aroma for Tails into Luminion was... Jacques into double discard. True. Archaeops with Ultra Ball into Lukia V-Star. Ah. Now you have to throw away a lot of resources. I think there's two Ultra Ball in hand, so it still kind of works. But it's the double chop discard into research strategy. Yeah. You just like using Jacques if you can Jacques. Uh, <laughs> true. That is true indeed. It's going to just be this Ultra Ball now. Oh, this is the main issue I have. I don't like losing that collapse stadium in this matchup, but I guess there's uh -oh. two minutes left. Who cares? Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> if this game was going 12 playing, minutes, yeah, then there's a little more time where that Luminion uh, or damaged Lugia being replaced is so clean, but this that's, that's not what you want to see. Not what you want to see indeed, but that's where we're at at this point in time. We are going to see both those evolutions, the Lugia V-Star, as well as that Chinchino, and then that V-Star power bringing out these Archaeops, 
onto the bench with that summoning star and all mm. of these energy are now coming out of the deck and onto our field, onto these attacking Pokemon that Chinchino being one of them. So awesome. I love this card. The special roll. We're special and we're rolling. <laughs> I just think of sushi all the time and I'm just like, I bet Chinchino <laughs> makes delicious sushi. <laughs> That's nice true. crunchy roll, big knockout <laughs> on a brute bonnet, sign me up. Yeah, every time I look at a sushi menu, I'm going to the special rolls. That's, that's for right. sure, Kyle. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, that special roll is going to get us somewhere here from that Chichino. Uh, unless it can distort time like a Dialga, I think we're in trouble. Yes, I, that is true. It is winded down. Why Why do we keep going to time here for all these matches, Kyle? I just want to see some it, nice conclusions. It's a, it's a big debate right now on social media. A lot it of is. players are that's talking true. about it. We've seen data collected all over the place and the truth of the matter is your actions take longer on stream you've got yep. judges watching every move you play slower because you're nervous and you don't want to make a mistake and yes it all leads to about five to seven extra minutes of play and everybody doesn't like to concede on stream unless you're me it's my favorite <laughs> thing to do that's true I, I click the button the second i see my hand and it doesn't have the exact seven cards in a research for seven. Kyle concedes in his free time, yeah, yeah. that is for sure. <laughs> uh, the, the master ball being played there from Rudy. Then we're just going to see that knockout on the Brute Bonnet. So, yes, no switching effect needed, huh, Kyle? Now it's in the discard pile. Kramer in, in the active. We're going to see that second Brute Bonnet now hit the field. At least we're going to have some poison happening if we can get that tool card attached as well. And the ancient booster Ooh. energy Cap capsule. Brubon, it is an ancient Pokemon. Three retreat costs on that thing? Yeah. It's, it's a chunky lad, you know. That it's, is it's, a heavy it's mushroom. stuck to the ground and connected to all its homies. They True. talk to each other by <laughs> wiggling their roots or whatever. <laughs> I'm not a scientist. Well, that is time in the round for our players, and it looks like yeah, it's just going to be a fist bump here. Well, we all know what could have happened. True. But this is what happens. Cloth, Lugia, Ty, both players now <sighs> with the opportunity for a win and in in the next two rounds. Oh, yeah. So